Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Next match, Cross Balanced Cup. So, back at Group A, we already had the second match here of the, you know, the second batch of duels. Um, so, we have uh, our next matchup. We have Frog FTK versus Macro Rabbit. So, interesting matchup. We, like in advance or before this matchup, you would say that Macro Rabbit should have the advantage over the, you know, the more obvious super graveyard oriented deck being Frog FTK. But, uh, I mean, this is with side deck. We see Snipe Hunter in the side deck, Heavy Storm, Cold Wave to some extent, Brain Control, Mystical Space Typhoon. Um, only one copy though, plus Cyber. I mean, the, as you know, Frog FTK going first, you definitely want the portion of the FTK deck uh, or variant of the deck, right? While uh, going second, you could definitely side deck in like the, whatchamacallit, the Frog or Tribute Summon lineup, like, you know, Light and Darkness Dragon. This is Makro Rabbit. Uh, I think, was it first place of a, a YCS back then, like 10 years ago? So, uh, which deck has the advantage? Interesting one. I could definitely agree with the public and, uh, you know, Makro Rabbit should indeed have the advantage uh, in favor over the Frog FTK deck, because again, Makro Cosmos is such a strong card. Anyway, so uh, Mark Rabbit goes first and opening Rabbit with um, no hand traps, but with warning, that's strong. And as you know, uh, Jurek Guayba, uh, when it like destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon another copy. I believe it's from the deck. I think so. Not from the hand, but from the deck or or from the hand. No, it's, it's exclusively from the deck, I think. Basically, you know, a one card rank for exceeds play being either Lagia or Dolka. So uh, Dolka was definitely needed, and this was a very quick, very swift uh, game one. I mean, Rabbit go first, plus warning, warning for the one for one here in this case, I mean, it speaks for itself. So now going second, and uh, you see, <laughs> ah yes, uh, always right. I mean, the deck does have some draw cards like Murray of Greed, like Hand Destruction, I mean, you could like mill your entire deck or pretty much your entire deck first with substitute and then you know start using your draw cards uh, cards like um, hand destruction murray and uh, poison draw frog right so yeah we see mass driver so doesn't really you know matter this game is something that i'm not going to win going second uh, here in this situation so now game number three and this is actually a pretty bonkers opening hand i believe macro cosmos uh, is one of them yep uh but shine tornade always and uh i mean it's fine though if um if the the frog deck is not able to um you know capitalize on that like here in this case put up a light and darkness dragon or let's say a special summon swap normal summon ruin and toad into a uh, 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 substitute right to you know spam your field full of big frogs like unifrog flip flop um uh, death frog to attack over the monsters right to attack over the low attack uh dino monsters um Anyway, so, uh, you know, you know the situation or you know how a Light and Darkness Dragon works. It always uh, has to, you know, negate the first card in the chain. You know, Light and Darkness Dragon will immediately chain to the first card being activated. And then, as you know, you can chain to that with Bottomless Prison. Here in this case, the Light and Darkness Dragon was indeed banished. And Macro Cosmos still resolves because Light and Darkness Dragon wasn't able to distract, the, or distract the, um, uh, you know, decrease the... Um, the what is it attack points and defense points yeah uh, but anyway typhoon <laughs> the one of typhoon takes care of cosmos and here is where i definitely needed that uh, macro cosmos to you know be still phase upon the field again not capitalize or not let frogs capitalize on that particular setup and i'm honest i was like mm, this doesn't really seem you know too good i think my set was a forbidden lens i think so but uh, as you know, like, I mean, the, the, this, the, this doesn't seem threatening, but the thing is, is that double dupe frog here in this case, as you know, the dupe frog lock prevents your opponent from attacking. Plus, let's say if one dupe frog is like gone, Book of Moon or whatever, there's still substitute. Substitute prevents the frog monster from, uh, you know, being destroyed by a battle. And then there is this two small frogs, like I believe under the left, we have the Unifrog. That's the one that, you know, when it does damage, uh, you can pop one card from your opponent, at least a spell or trap, and flip flop, you know, that the, the one that bounces back multiple monsters on your opponent's side of the field. So in all honesty, I already gave up this duel because of that setup, but, um, Lessons learned, there are still some outs in the deck of being a uh, dark horse. Okay, 
I'm still very much alive in a duel. But look at this Murray of Greed. <laughs> draw Cyber Dragon. Uh, brain Control was already there. Quick Draw Synchron is not live because, as you know, Ronin Toting cannot be used as Synchro material. Uh, so I guess this is a decent play, right? Uh, tribute setting the, uh, what should I call it, the Quick Draw. Um, here I have a couple of options. The thing is, is that, um, as you saw in the extra deck uh, for Frog, the what is it called? Chimera Tech Overdragon is there, so I can't put Sand Aids and Defense because, you know, it will just fusion it away. Uh, maybe a better play could have been like a, a crash with Sand Mains into Cyber Dragon and uh, keep the Forbidden Lands, just in case of Torrential, right? So I could use Lands on my, uh, on my Sand Mains, but I don't think it would have mattered too much in the long run. So again, yeah, that's a problem, right? Treeborn returns, so if there's like... Uh, uh, there, there are no monarchs, but let's say, again, a Light and Darkness Dragon, it can put the pressure on your opponent. Um, and Substitute as well, especially if there are still, you know, Death Frogs and even a Dupe Frog in a deck. You know, it, it, this setup, again, doesn't really seem too threatening, but... Uh, we overlooked Fishborg. Fishborg also, that, that, that's, that's huge. Uh, especially because of Swap Frog, you know, bounce it back. And ah, uh, the art. This is the first time I think I'm getting Armory Armed OTK. Uh, you know, dealing the burn damage. Oh, burn damage attack. You know, the deal of Armory Arms. So, a bit unfortunate, but. The grind game is not something that I'm going to win against that particular deck. It is what it is. So, again, going first. And. Um, it's it's a carbon copy of the previous duels, no? Again, get Shine Tornade. Um, normal Summon, Substitute. Okay, that's nice. Fishboard Blaster is there. That's a problem because now we know that, especially because of Substitute, uh, if this is not OTK, then the deck will eventually end on like Stardust and maybe uh, another Synchro plus the, the, you know, the Frog lineup to protect the field. And with this hand, like Nullman of Crossout is one of the side deck cards, which is definitely good, uh, unless of course, you know, that the, the frog deck opens the nuts every time with one for one substitute swap and, you know, the list goes on. Um, so yeah, I mean, Phoenix Chain is good for the potential Brio neck which is coming up. The prison can be good against Stardust Dragon, so this is all fine. Problem is, is I don't have any one card exceed plays, uh, unless I top deck maybe Monster Reborn or Rabbit, of course. So I need a bit, you know, I need to be a bit lucky. Uh, still no Maxis. Uh, did I keep in my Maxis? I, sh I, sh I think I should. Um, can't remember. But uh, yeah, again, one dupe. I think probably one dupe is fine here, no? Okay, double dupe. Ah, okay, I, I, I guess you could keep like double dupe plus a substitute just in case for next turn if the field survives, which is definitely going to do with Stardust and Bryonic. You could trip one of the, tribute one of the, the dupe frogs away for Uni here in this case. So Brionek, you know, you could use its effect multiple times during the same turn because there's a Brionek pre errata. Uh, Phoenix, yeah, that's what I was talking about, right? Uh, Phoenix Chain was forced out on Brionek, obviously. And here I, I really wanted to keep the prison for Stardust. But as you know, the Unifrog can just attack directly, deal damage and then pop one card from your opponent. So potentially popping the Phoenix Chain as well. So I think I was forced to use the Dimensional Prison here in this case. And... Yeah, the Fishborg there, double dupe. Cosmos is okay, but too late because I'm um, Nisworm Excess. It's, it's, it's those... What? What in the hell? Eh? It is what it is. So Light and Darkness again hits the board also. So, nope. Wasn't able to win this one, but I mean, let's be honest. Like, like, like two to three times, one for one, Giant Ornate, also Typhoon. You need to be a bit lucky, right? And and on my side, like, no uh, rabbits, you know, those one card, nasty exceed plays, tour guide into Livier. Nope, it is what it is. So next matchup, we are back again at Group E. We have <laughs> Goki Gumlar versus Infernal Knight. So both, you know, decks that discard your opponent's hand. Okay, feel free to leave your predictions. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a control like if you enjoyed the video. Leave him signing out. Peace.